What do you feel like it is? Because I, I know Trump, he's, he's such a special character character. He's amazing. He's brought in so many voters who wouldn't normally vote Republican. But what do you think it is about young people that make them especially drawn to Trump? I mean, it could be his humor, his personality. But do you feel like there are things that students for Trump you like to focus on to bring young people into the conservative side? Yeah, you know, and, and, and I'd like to also start by saying that, you know, Democrats especially, and they're very good at this, they use the college campus sort of as a roadmap to the White House where they'll go on this, you know, these campuses and they'll say all of these really awesome things that sound good, you know, on paper. But when you try to put them into reality, it doesn't work out so well, like this whole forgiving student loan debt, sort of a carrot stick approach that they use with young people. I mean, to quote Kamala Harris, I think in 2020, she said uh, that young people are very stupid when referencing, you know, 18 to 24 year olds. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's like you're hating on your own base, but there is some truth to that because they believe that, right? They're going to go onto these campuses. They're going to promote these ideas, uh, knowing that very well they can't actually, you know, act on them, right? We're already seeing Biden sort of walk back many pieces of the student loan forgiveness scheme that he's, that he's come out with. But what we've noticed, um, going onto these campuses is when you look at the demographics, you know, you look at 60 or 70 percent of young people, millennials, get their news off of social media, whether that be TikTok, whether it be Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, that's where they're going to get their news. And they're not getting the full story at that. They're getting a headline or a blurb and they're forming an entire thesis uh, or opinion around, you know, such a small piece of information. So what we've done is to combat against that is, is we've been going on social media to promote the news to talk about the facts of what Donald Trump did when he was in office, uh, while he was in office. Um, that's one of the best ways that we can do it, you know, especially since that's the square to where information is being garnered. Another piece to that is going directly to the student, not preaching to them, but talking to them as if you're on the same level. That is one thing that the GOP has failed time and time again with their youth program, which they barely fund to begin with. I think for, from my time of doing this, there's probably been four or five youth directors at the RNC, uh, all of which you know, have either just left uh, or were fired because they couldn't get anything done. That's a big critical problem. We need 24-7, 365 you know, days a week outreach to this community, just like we've been doing with the African-American community in the Hispanic community. If you want to win these votes, you have to work for them. Um, and I would also add another piece to that. It is not uh, so much that young people are opposed to conservative ideas. It's that they're not exposed to them at all in the first place. Uh, and, and that's one of the biggest problems on these campuses, among school administrators, among professors, is you have definitely a leaning Democrat appeal that you see on these campuses. And that's why we as conservatives we have to fight back in, in the information square, going to these places directly, doing campus tours. This is one of the best ways, uh, you know, I think that we get that support. Uh, and of course, the hearts and the minds of the younger generation. Uh, I, I would also say one more thing is that Donald Trump, when you actually break down his ideas, you look at his economic policies, his tax policies, his job policies, they worked for America. We were in so much of a better place then than we are now. So if you as a young person or you as a Democrat who may be listening to this, if you can tune out the mean tweets or sort of the rhetoric that you would say is unpresidential because Donald Trump was not your typical president and you just live your life under those policies, you would be living a much better life without getting into the weeds of every single thing Donald Trump said or did. Absolutely. So many good points there, Ryan. But I'm going to pick up on the social media one because I think it's so true. Many young people, they hear about conservatism maybe growing up from their parents, but then they go to college and they become indoctrinated on campus. Right. And I think in many ways, you know, we can't maybe take back a lot of these, you know, campuses in terms of the, the professors, but we can start kind of our own rebel groups and have, you know, our own clubs and then also social media really infiltrate their minds because they're spending a lot of time on social media. So how right. do you feel like when young people maybe are getting their news in such quick snapshot ways, you can draw them in on social media? Because I see you as kind of a very digital expert. So if, let's say, we're trying to reach these young people online, what do you feel like draws them in to our message when they're seeing, you know, a AOC or leftists on TikTok and things like that? Well, I think, you know, Libs of TikTok does a really good job at that. Um, when you look at the content, and, and this individual has been banned numerous times simply for sharing 
the words and the videos of what these people are saying, which means to me that, OK, what they're saying in the first place uh, is probably crazy enough to get them banned on whatever platform they set it on. Um, it's by showing these things, right, you know, pulling out the common sense and things, I, I believe, because when you think about it, not your average person supports the stuff that the left has been saying where, you know, teaching kids about sex in, in second grade, you know, inserting CRT, right? Having it where every single flag under the rainbow is posted in a classroom. And now, you know, you have teachers coming out. How can I influence my student? There's videos where it's like, oh, this is how I influence my students today. And their parents don't know. It's like most average Americans, even young people look at that and they're like, this is not who I am. So I think in itself, they're in self-destruct mode. I really do. I think that so many people, when you look at Florida on its own, like 1.5 million people left the Democrat Party to switch over to become Republican uh, compared to like 800,000 that switched from Republican to Democrat in Florida. That's like that all across the country, right? People feel like their party has left them. Joe Biden has lied so many times. The enthusiasm isn't there to, to begin with. It was barely there in 2020. Now you're seeing his numbers significantly dropped, cut in half even more so uh, among young voters because they feel like he hasn't delivered on campaign promises, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, fully getting rid of student loan debt, which some of those progressives want. Uh, and then, of course, the economic outlook that young people, when they get out of college, it's like job prospects are, are destroyed uh, for so many Americans. Look at the housing market. You can't even afford to buy a house. Right. And look at the cities. Right. Kids are being forced out of the cities because metropolitan prices are through the roof, like five, six thousand dollars to rent a two bedroom in some of these cities. Um, so I think at the end of the day, you win when you start calling out the lunacy and you start going back to common sense and common sense rhetoric, I think, is going to win uh, because most people do not support these crazy uh, asinine things that are just being put out in front of their faces 